Good morning, Digit fam. Adam Dowd here, back to give you the lowdown on the high tech. And I'm happy to report that I weathered the Monday the 13th storm quite well, thank you very much. So I'm just going to say, at least for me... It's not a thing. But I'll tell you what is a thing, and that's PCs. So let's jump right in. It is January 14th, 2020, and this is your Digit Daily. PCs all back, baby, yeah. Bad Austin Powers voices aside, the PC market grew somewhere between 2.3 and 4.8% year over year. It's the first time since 2011 that the PC has grown, which for those of you with trouble reading between the lines, means the PC market has been shrinking for seven years. We have two estimates, one from Gartner and one from IDC, who respectively reported the 2.3 and 4.8% increases. Gartner did not include Chromebooks or iPads in its stats, and IDC left out just iPads but included Chromebooks, which leaves an interesting question. Are Chromebooks PCs? Are iPads hashtag what's a computer? We're not really here to debate that either way, but honestly, I can see good arguments for both sides on that. When you're talking about personal computers, which, by the way, is literally what PC is short for, so yes, it includes Macs, you're generally talking about business machines, and I'm not positive that Chromebooks fall into that category, and I'm dead certain that iPads do not. Every year, Apple compares the iPad Pro to a PC, and every year, reviewers come out and say, um, yeah, this is not a PC, so just shut the hell up, Tim. Sorry, little soapbox moment there. I'm back. And speaking of Macs, by the way, shipments of the Mac fell between 0.9 and 3% year over year, despite the epic keyboard reemergence. At IDC, Ryan Reith, who is program vice president with IDC's worldwide mobile device trackers, said, quote, This past year was a wild one in the PC world, which resulted in impressive market growth that ultimately ended seven consecutive years of market contraction. The market will still have its challenges ahead, but this year was a clear sign that PC demand is still there despite the continued insurgence of emerging form factors and the demand for mobile computing. A wild year in the PC world? I don't know about you, but I want to party with this guy, huh? Huh? Yeah. The leaders in shipments were Lenovo, HP, and Dell as 1, 2, and 3, who all grew between 3 and 8.1% year over year. But it was a bad year if your company name started with A, because Apple, Asus, and Acer all shrunk by 0.9 to 6%. So what's with the growth? Well, Windows 7 got EOL'd literally today, which means no more Windows updates for Windows 7 computers. That means to continue getting software and security updates, you need Windows 10. And many people and companies just said, screw it, and bought a new computer. Hashtag disposable technology. Despite that, according to research, approximately one-third of all computers in the world still use Windows 7, which isn't surprising because Windows 7 was... What's the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah, good. Windows 8 was mostly a train wreck, and Windows 10 was what Windows 8 should have been. I think that most of the 30% that are still using Windows 7 took a look at Windows 8 and said, Oh, hell no, and just never looked back. Seriously, folks, Windows 10 isn't bad. You should check it out. Meantime, we're starting to see better things from the PC space, including that folding screen laptop from Lenovo and a new MacBook with a not crappy keyboard. Neither of those things are going to be enough to move the needles by themselves, but that, combined with more Windows 10 upgraders and maybe, just maybe, things are looking up for the PC market. And speaking of up, let's head into the roundup! <laughs> We spoke the other day about the upcoming S20 lineup, including the rumored S20 Ultra. Two leakers have leaked specs for that device, which include a 108 megapixel primary camera, a 48 megapixel sensor paired with a 10x periscope zoom, 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, 128 to 1 terabyte of storage, and 12 to 16 gigabytes of RAM. 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 45 watt fast charging, 5G connections, a porterhouse steak, and an hour long massage with a happy ending. And while it's wonderful to think that a phone like this might someday exist, this honestly looks like something that some fanboy would write when asked, what would your most fantabulous smartphone look like? And look, maybe it'll come. I can't say for sure that it will or won't. But what I can say is that's top of the line everything. And as far back as I can remember, which admittedly isn't all that far, no phone has ever come out with top-end 
everything. Something always falls short, which isn't to say that that something isn't great in and of itself, but it's not the very highest number of everything that you can imagine. So will this phone actually come out looking like this? We'll have to wait and see, but let's just say I have my doubts. After the December 6th shooting at a Pensacola Naval Air Station, the FBI approached Apple about unlocking the iPhones the shooter was using, despite knowing how this movie ends. Sure enough, Apple said, big bag of nope, and the U.S. Attorney and FBI are acting all surprised, as if the same song hadn't been sung four years ago at San Bernardino. And believe me, I'm not trying to make light of those incidents. I'm just saying that Apple's position was pretty darn clear back then, and it hasn't changed its tune since then. In fact, everything that we've heard from Apple since indicated that Apple was going to double, triple, and quadruple down on this stance. And it also happens that I and Satya Nadella of Microsoft agree with Apple. While I agree with the FBI that a phone like this would be a treasure trove of information, I don't think that Apple, nor Microsoft, nor any other company should be able to unlock that information, let alone be required to do it. The European Parliament is looking to force all mobile phone manufacturers to use a common charger for all mobile devices. That would basically mean USB Type-C for all, which could theoretically mean that iPhones would need to change to USB-C as well, but honestly, that's probably going to happen in the next two years anyway. What will be interesting to see is what happens when the next kind of charging slash data port is designed and adopted. USB-C won't be here forever, and it's naive to think that it will be. So what do we do five years from now when a new standard comes out and companies are slow to adopt that? Actually, it'll be fine because right around that time, accessory makers will have finally stopped using micro USB so we can use our USB-C cables to charge those and the new cables to charge phones. Ain't technology grand. And finally, you know how the saying goes that everyone has a camera in their pocket now due to smartphones? Well, you know what people don't have in their pockets? Actual cameras. Chart Tuesday shows us a graph showing the meteoric rise of smartphones alongside a meteoric fall of cameras. The data includes digital point-and-shoots, film, and interchangeable lens cameras, which have dropped from 121 million sold in 2009 to around 15 million sold in 2019. Ouch. And you thought PCs had it rough. So that's going to do it for today's Digit Daily. If you'd like to learn more about any of these stories, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter on Digit.com. And if you like what you heard, subscribe, leave a review, and don't forget to tell your friends about DigitDailyPod.com. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd, Dead Technology on Twitter, and we'll talk again tomorrow. Tomorrow.